Ladies and gentlemen, the word is already out. It is no secret we have been pranked on a scale never seen before here on the Hermitcraft server. Uh, yeah, that kind of scale. That's the prank. What? What is going on right here? Oh, uh, Mumbo attempted to prank me in the last episode of his, which I've just finished watching, so I know what these signs say, but I'm going to read them to you because it makes sense of everything that's going on here. Hey Asuma, I was going to build something really awesome, and yes Mumbo, it was really awesome, to congratulate you on passing your driving test, but sadly it all went very, very wrong, and I blew it all up using TNT. It wasn't an accident either, I blew it up on purpose because it all went that badly. Anyway, many congrats, drive safe, Mumbo, and then there's a spare sign over here for symmetry. So I came over here before I watched this video, aware that I've been pranked, and this is all I could find. I was looking around in the sky. I was looking under the water. This is it. <laughs> Unfortunately, his prank didn't go too well, as you can see. But we've got a little bit of tidying up to do, because there's a couple of blocks over here, which we should be able to hit while we're still in the boat. Amazing. That makes me feel... <laughs> makes me feel efficient. I'm swimming, and I'm also breaking blocks. Awesome. And also, what I want to do while I'm up here is put this netherrack. It's been missing for ages, just the one block. And I want to put it back. And some of you have commented on how ugly the netherrack looks. I'll agree. Not the nicest texture ever. But when you're flying around in the sky, man, the view is awesome. You barely even notice the netherrack. You just get a sense of the fire. Yeah, that view speaks for itself, right? And it's the fire that pops out. And I love it. We're going to leave that. Because the Octavoid is complete. With exception to a reindeer. If you didn't see the last episode, it was in fact an epic sode. And we finished off this project, which is pretty cool. Hey, I don't have my ender chest on me. The rule is always bring an ender chest, of course. And yes, as I was saying, the last episode was an epic sode. And I am itching to see all of your feedback on that, because it means that the Octavoid project is actually done. Finished. Completo. Which is amazing, because we spent such a long time on this. But as it goes, I have yet to see the last episode because it hasn't been released yet and that's how things go here on YouTube sometimes you put out or sorry you start recording a video before you put out the last one and whenever I mention that I always get a comment from someone saying you know why don't you just release it as soon as you've recorded it you know uh, do you guys appreciate a schedule this is like my question of the episode so leave a comment down below and let me know do you appreciate that at roughly the same time every day a video will come out for you I do six episodes a week at the moment sometimes it's seven do you know what? I'm going to get rid of these things. I don't think they need to be here anymore. <laughs> uh, sometimes it's 7, sometimes it's 6, and generally I post at 4.30, British time, UK, GMT, whatever time zone it is. <laughs> that being said, Sky Factory comes out at 6pm, but anyway, I'm waffling. The point is, do you like the schedule? Do you like knowing when the videos are coming out and getting one of them every single day? I think the answer is going to be yes, but on occasions where I've mentioned that things are being recorded, like out of order. There's always someone who says, oh, just release it when it's ready. Anyway, anyway, we have some important business to attend to because in the second to last episode, we discovered a very rare sight in this game, a cheaty cactus block, and there it is right there. And I got some intelligent comments pointing out that below this is a sight that many players will have never seen before. Prepare yourselves to see the underside of the cactus texture. It's not the most remarkable thing ever, but we will go down and have a look. I've seen that before. Have you seen it before? It's pretty cool, right? I mean, that's the underside of the block. Would that make a nice texture if it were on the side of a block and you could use it with building? I think it might. I think it would be a useful one. But there you go. If you haven't seen it, now you have. <laughs> Swiftly moving on to Hermiton Halls, I asked you if you'd like to see me rebuild my little area. It's not particularly interesting in comparison to what Iskal's done. And also Cubfan has set up a Never Throne down there, which looks amazing. And we've got to change this, but right now my brain just isn't in tune with this idea. I've been playing around with it in creative mode, trying a few things, not too much working. But the fact that I've come over here gave me an idea, or better yet, a realisation that even though... There are no new booster packs to go and pick up at the moment. We can still play the game because other people have been coming over here and using their booster packs as well, like Cubfan has. And if we go and have a look in this chest, I've put the rare ones down at the bottom. So these two rare ones we already have. And there's five other ones here that have been left in this chest. And we're going to take them all because we can trade. And it just so happens that I have four rare items already and that there's five uncommons and commons that I can 
dispose of, so to speak, put back in the trading chest, right? Because these ones, these uncommons and commons, are just going to fill up over time. So we're going to... I apologise if you can hear that. There is some crazy winds outside right now making a lot of noise. And I'm a little bit worried that you'll be hearing it in the video. So I apologise for that this episode. I can't control the weather. You know, there's nothing I can do about that, <laughs> unfortunately. Anyway, we now have loads of rares, which is really cool. We've got one from free. I think we might have another one from free. Yep, so we've got the two from set three, and I think we might have two from set one as well. So next time we crank open a booster pack, fingers crossed for a mythic. Remember this old place, do ya? The Logfellas secret base. Well, down here we have a beautiful, amazing tree farm. It's beautiful and amazing because it is... A crazy amount of redstone. Hi, fellow of a sword, get away from me. <laughs> uh, this thing's been broken for ages, man. It's been broken for a couple of updates, and I messaged Ill Mango, and what a guy, what a guy, by the way. He uh, sent me a fix just for me to fix this farm, which was really cool of him to do, as I wouldn't have had a clue, really. Well, I kind of roughly get the idea of what needed to be fixed, but... I wouldn't know how to make that myself. So the problem was the TNT duplicator, which is all the way up there, that we were using in the past, broke. And then we weren't able to use this no more. Now, I think someone else has since come over here, tried to use this thing, and potentially done a lot of damage. Can you see that row of pistons there? I think they're in the wrong position. <laughs> so I got a lot of work cut out for me here. But I've done some of it already. So up the top here, there used to be this crazy duper going all the way up there. And now it's a little bit lower, and we're using one that might look a little bit familiar because we've used it recently to work on the Netherwalk farm. So we've got this TNT duper, which drops it down to here. Guess what? That piston pushes it down again after a little delay, and it falls down to another block down there. Now, I'm not going to run this thing straight away. Oh, no, because you can see there is a load of wood down the bottom here. And in order for this wood to be destroyed by the TNT and us to keep the drops, it has to be like pushed along at the precise time to take advantage of a little bit of a bug. So we got to chop all of this stuff away. But then in front of me you can see there are also logs in other places they clearly shouldn't be. So I've got a lot of logging to do and I've got to fix a lot of pistons. I found some new friends. I wonder how long they've been hiding out down here for. Get out of here you scamps, jeez. <laughs> That to me looks like a set of neatly organized pistons, which is nice to look at because it means that I've fixed it properly. I hope I have fixed it properly. It's now time for a test. I've been double checking these wires. Everything looks absolutely fine. But if there's one thing I'm pretty sure we're going to be short of, it is bone meal, right? Now this thing chews through the stuff, so we need to go pick up some bone meal before we can run a test. So I've just loaded up on bones, courtesy of the super chunk over there, which is next to Impulse's Tony Stark's mansion, as I do believe he calls it. And I had to show you this, because Scar has been over here building him like a lawn area in front of it, and this thing, man, it is absolutely gorgeous. I think someone else is stopping by to have a look as well. Well, it's Impulse, he's checking out what Scar has built for him. <laughs> uh, isn't this absolutely gorgeous? What a lovely looking garden at the front of his mansion. I'll tell you what, Impulse is going to be one happy man. Please excuse the FPS, it's pretty horrible in this place, especially when you're loading it twice. And i got to say, watching this thing in action is really cool. And there's no problems with it at all. So let's go look over at this part, the bit that we fixed. You can see an explosion over there in the distance, man. I can tell you, this thing is working a charm. Let's watch it in action. Down comes the TNT. It disappears because of weird server issues and then it will blow up <laughs> even though it's sort of invisible and you can see that the items are dropping down into the water now on occasion I have seen the occasional log land on top of these other blocks which probably isn't very good like that one there will probably get blown up but hey I ain't complaining because now all I've got to do is stand AFK and get loads and loads of logs but it's awesome to have this thing back again because our supplies have been running low and I'm really glad we've been able to fix it. Or Mango, if you're watching, buddy, thank you so much for sharing that fix. Really do appreciate it. So I was walking through the corridor here and I was thinking, hey, I never got around to finishing this. So that's something that I should do. There's a block missing up there. I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> and the Logfellas thing with me and Ren has kind of reached its conclusion this season, right? Oh, I've got my volume turned off because I've been doing the farming. Yes, yes, yes. Let's turn it all the way back up. That thing seriously does make an absolute racket. And yes, yeah, so the Logfellas thing has kind of come to its conclusion, but the Logfellas base was never completed. And there's only a couple of things left to do, really. And one of those was this tunnel. 
Uh, a moment ago I think we saw it that this side on the left wasn't done, so I've gone and done that. And we need to make a little connecting thing between this tunnel and that one, which I'm looking forward to because I've got some ideas on how to tie them together. We head down here though, on the right we've got the wood farm and everything there is kind of done and fixed as we did a moment ago. Then again on the right we have the art gallery which looks absolutely amazing and to be fair there's very little to be done in here. I think maybe tidying up a couple of odd blocks here and there on the ceiling and the side would certainly look good. Like this looks a little janky over here so there's some things that could be fixed but Joe Hills did an amazing job with this. I love this room. It feels really great and I love this staircase as well. So there's that to tidy up but then on the opposite side there's literally nothing to put over here so I thought what about a small chest room because there are some chests back here and also there are some chests on the other side and we could tidy up a little bit. Looks like there's a couple of blocks missing there as well. Oh yeah, I used to put ores in as well. I had a smaller pallet this time and gravel. Yeah, I love doing the randomised blocks. And then a tiny bit of work maybe here or... I was looking at that and thinking that's not right, but actually it is because that's this room. Oh man, this room looks so cool, doesn't it? And Cub Fan is still locked up up top. He hasn't managed to escape yet. Impulse on the side. They're all still here. Tango's over on this side. Man, this is putting a big smile on my face. Some great times here on the server, right? And this room is just amazing. Alright, so I've tweaked this entrance a little bit and then mirrored it on this side. We need to put in one of these in the middle, though. And it's going to be a storage room, so nice, simple design. And we're going to have stacks of chests that are four tall. In fact, I can put them in place and show you, so it'll be like that. But double, we'll put some blocks behind them. And instantly, I thought, I'm surrounded by clay. A cotter furnace, let's use some terracotta blocks. And what will this look like? Well, that's not great. I wanted to get it so it sort of created uh, like a, a shape with something in the center, right? There we go, that's the way. So then what if I turn... There, that's the way you do it. Bam, that little pattern right there. Doesn't really make a lot of sense to the rest of the build, and it pops out a little bit, but I look at it like it's a carpet, you know? So I think that'll fit in there. I'm going to go look at the other textures available, though, and see if anything would fit into this room a little better. There is something super disorientating about placing these blocks, is that you've got to spin around, and then you've got to move about as you're spinning around to put in each block. Yeah, try and do that yourself. Try and place some of those blocks on the ceiling. It's not terrible, it just, it just feels a little bit odd, you know? And anyway, I was looking at what was going on down below, and I thought, hey, this is going to be awkward to fill into this space, so let's put in another block, and there you go. That one matches the spruce, which we know because we used it last time with the brown clay, and there's our storage room looking glorious. This looks really bright. It almost looks as if it's emitting light. Now, on the opposite side, I've also gone in here, and check it out. I have removed like every little floor or you know gap in the wall or whatever, gone around, plugged it all up. These bits over here had some bits at the top that weren't quite done and now the room looks super clean and super tidy which I just love. And over here there's actually just a tiny bit I still need to do, there's like an access point up above. And down here I believe this leads to one of the very first like branch mines that we made on the server. I'm not going to go down there but I did go down there myself a moment ago. And I almost recognised it. You know when the world starts and you're in a fresh new world, everything is really exciting and interesting. Not that it isn't right now, but those first few caves, they kind of stick in your mind a little bit. And I went down there and I thought, actually, they kind of look like uh, the first like mine shaft that I made. So that might be the one, the first one that we started mining in. Anyway, what we've got to do next, though, is I want to build a ledge that goes across the side here. Now, originally, I was going to build this room during a live stream, and I came up with a really nice but sort of overly complex design for a like wall across here. And I started to lay down some of the foundations. As you can see, there's spruce logs here. And then I realized that it looked... Well, it didn't look bad, it was just too much work for this big room, right? So I kind of left it, Joe came in here and just made use of the clay and made it look cool. And now what we're going to do is just build something a lot simpler going across this space. The storage room is done, and on the opposite side we just need to build this wall over here. I've been looking at it and I've placed in these spruce bits like so, because that's where we would have all of this stone and stuff on the other side, right? But it doesn't quite work with that because it comes right out to the edge of the room. So spruce is going to work, I reckon. And what we're going to do is just nab away that. And I want to make like a trim. And I think I want it to start here. 
So there will be some hardened clay going above it all the way across. It will go out in front of this, it will hide that glowstone a little bit. And then below that, we're going to have like these little segments that are too wide because of the spacing of the spruce. So I reckon just boom, boom, and boom, boom there. And we're left with a gap. And we might just throw in some terracotta blocks and they might just look terrible. I don't know. I should have a third design. I can see where it is now. I've got three different, three of the different ones available to me. Um, so something like that kind of looks like, yeah, it's there. Whatever. It's going to be the brown one again, isn't it? That's just going to be too bright. And it'll pop out into the room too much. And the brown one will probably sit in there just nice. Actually, you know what? The green kind of throws it off a little bit. Maybe I should look for another one. Man, these terracotta blocks, they're just kind of not fitting into this build at all. I was going to put slabs there. Then I decided, actually, andesite because it's used on the ground. And over here, I think it's going to look even nicer. Because what I've realized is that the spacing over here is free. And we can just slap a block in there at the back. And then there's like this odd one over here at the side. And that's it. This room is now finito. It's not a work of art, but it looks reasonable. And that's the room finished. So with all of that done, there is one thing standing between us and completing the log fella's base. That's right, completing it. Finito. <laughs> one of my new favourite words. Um, yeah, just this little bit right here. And before I rush into it, I do have one idea. I want to get a few others. But I love the log spiral that was done down here. It looks really great and so I was thinking maybe a mini log spiral going through here just for this short little section. Something like this, but I'm going to brainstorm it because I want to make it look cool of course. I think what I want to do is throw it back to what we have down the end there which is a lot of the hardened clay mixed with spruce wood and also with some pine leaves as well which I think will look really cool in here. So to start it off with we've got the spiral pattern going along the ground and in order to enter the tunnel here, I've sort of leaned it over to the side a little bit. And one of the things I wanted to do is just tuck away a light source down here. So we've got some light coming out of there. And this path is lit by these things on the side. But behind there, there's going to be a bit of a space. So we're going to have like a nice big arc going around, make out of hardened clay. And then maybe we'll put some beams through the middle as well. Something along those lines. So I'm changing out these uh, yellow mustard McDonald's clay blocks over here and thinking this little gap probably could do with being filled in. That looks alright. We should also put a little bit of a light source up here I reckon because it's starting to get a bit dim. And I really like how this has come together so far. I was uh, breaking a few blocks over here just changing them over one at a time. Let's take a step back and that looks very nice on its own at the moment. Uh, the problem I think we're going to face is that there isn't enough room here for spruce leaves. Maybe one or two here and there would look alright. But that looks pretty good as it is. So I think the other thing I'm going to have is like the occasional spruce beam coming through the top here. Coming down this tunnel I've spotted a couple of little inefficiencies. Uh, there was some blocks missing back there and I could have swore I'd done this thing, you know, triple checked it and uh, finished that a long time ago. And here's how I'm laying out the beams by the way, just uh, evenly spaced apart. There's room for free, although it sort of stretches out a little bit further in this direction because you've got this stuff over here. So we'll see how it looks. We might put in a fourth. But I've been thinking there is something that we have to have in this build. In fact, it should be all over the place in Logfella builds, and that is the sigil, which I got in my inventory. And I was thinking the cool place to hang it would be right there in the middle. Except we hang it on both sides. And we do it on every single beam, and then when you walk through here, you're going to see it over and over again, which is... Yeah, that looks that looks seriously cool. I like that a lot. And then I was also thinking that little space right there, that's definitely a spot where you could hide the sigil. I say hide it, I mean we're putting it on display for people to see. And in my head that was kind of a little bit higher up, and now I think it looks sort of odd. Maybe what we should do here is actually take that slab put that there. Did I pick up the slab? There it is. And maybe just put it up a little bit higher. How about on that block? There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Decided to change this up a little bit on this side just so it lines up with this one. We've added a fourth. Yeah, it really fills up that space. That seems like the right thing to do. And believe it or not, this place is finished. That being said, I've got to tidy up all of these shulker boxes, right? <laughs> Uh, there is another job for us to do though. Now that we've fixed the tree farm, we need to think about stocking up the Logfella shop once again. I call it a shop, it's more of a community service now because of course all the logs that we offer are going to be free of charge.
Well, I might just go into rage quit mode here because the farm has broken. And when this happens, it's a real pain to go and fix. But the thing is, when I finished fixing it after many times, a long time ago, I fixed it in a way that means, you know, this shouldn't happen again because it's all been built correctly. What's weird is that this isn't activating this piston up and down and it isn't changing in any of the other redstone, which is odd because that was the thing that didn't break before. Now, I had this in a cha-cha tree mode and I was... Oh, maybe you've got to turn it off after you've hit that one. Nope. Nope, I don't know. It's, it's, it's broken and I was using it correctly and it shouldn't have done this, man. It shouldn't have done this. Poor old Asuma and his cheaty tree farm. Well, I got a little bit more cha, -cha to bring over there, but otherwise we're kind of low on some stuff. In fact, none of it is yet to come through. This is the thing when you use the tree farm, right? You sit there and you put a load of resources into it, but then it's got to make its way around here. So you can see we've got a ton of cha, -cha from the batch that I just did, but it'll be a while before it actually harvests it. So it looks like we're stocking up on a little bit of a cha, -cha. We only needed one stock of birch and the rest of it is going to be spruce. Man, a moment ago I was all gutted. Do you know why I spent quite a bit of time fixing that tree farm and it's broken straight away, barely got to use it again. But that has turned around because coming through here, I've stumbled into a booster pack from the Hermitron Games. I am excited to see what is in here, that is for sure, and I'm really excited that I stumbled into this thing. Forgot to go looking around for them in a while. Do we have a mythic? A mythic would be fa- no mythic. I'm going to come back and pick this up in a moment, because as you can see, my inventory is pretty fill filled up and we need to stock up the Logfeller's shop. Okay, business here is all done. Let's go grab that shulker box. Every time I come to this place, it's so inspiring. What a gorgeous build, you know. This build, it sparkles. You get it? <laughs> because of the particle effects. It literally sparkles. Uh, anyway, if we pop down into the main room, we shall find that... There is some important news, there has been a rules update, and I'm not sure how to say this, but at the moment I am not going to play right now, like I, I need to speak to Ren himself about how to play this game. I'm going to plop this booster pack that we found down here and, you know, use that later on. I know you're supposed to keep nine at a time, but it would appear that I do not understand the rules that much at all. And I'm not really sure what the rules are about completing a set. I've seen that other players have been completing sets. And today, for me right now, is Friday, which is when I thought the sets were supposed to be scored. So I, I'm kind of like out of the loop, right? <laughs> I need to put on my thinking cap, have a chat to Ren, and I'm going to read this book as well. But for now, I'm going to just end this one on the note that uh, <laughs> I'm an idiot, basically. I don't know how to play the Hermitron game, man. We're probably we're probably gonna finish last. <laughs> that's that's the reality. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching this episode, and please do leave a like. Thank you for leaving a like if you did do that, and I will see you in the next episode. So ciao for now, and uh, I hope you're enjoying this very derpy intro. It feels like a derpy intro to me. Right, that's enough. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.